Good morning. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at solving systems of linear equations. And we're going to do this algebraically. So example number one, okay, is going to be y equals negative 2x and y equals 5x minus 21. Now, if we're solving this system, notice there's two variables, okay? So when it says solve, let's make note that we want to find the values of both variables. Okay, in this case it's x or y, and if we were to graph these on our graphing calculator, we would see that these two lines cross. So we can make note that it would be the point of intersection. So we typically write our answer as a point, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So if we look at this problem, we can see that both equations are in the form y equals. When that's the case, and whether they tell us x equals or y equals, we want to use substitution. So what that means is I'm going to take what one of the expressions for x that's equivalent to y, and then I'm going to substitute it down below where that y is uh, in the equation because they are equivalent. They represent the same thing. So I end up with negative 2x equals 5x minus 21. Now we have an equation with just x in it so that we can go ahead and solve. So I'm going to subtract the 5x over. I know before I said I like to have a positive number of x's, but the x's are already by itself on the left side where on the right side I'd have to move the 21 over and then the 2x over. So now I have negative 7x equals negative 21, divide by negative 7, and x equals a positive 3. So we have the value of x, now we need y. You can take either one of these equations and plug it in, and then you have the value of y. So let's just use the first one. It just says to get y, I need to take the x and multiply it by negative 2. So we negative 2 times 3, and then we get y equals negative 6. Now, so there's the answer separately, or you can write the answer as a point. So a point is written with the x first, then y, so, or it's the point 3, negative 6. You should go back and check in both equations, or even graph them on your calculator, but I'm just going to check in that second equation that I didn't use for the substitution. So does y, which is negative 6, equal 5 times x, which is 3, minus 21. 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 minus 21 is a negative 6. So that checks out. Okay? Example number 2. Okay, is 5x plus 9y equals 21 and negative 6y equals x. So rather than them both be in the form y equals, I do see that I have an equation in the form of not y equals but x equals. So I want to take this term and substitute it above where the x is. So we're still going to use substitution. And it ends up being 5 times negative 6y plus 9y equals 21. Now it's an equation with just one variable. Um, I don't have much room on the paper, so I'm going to write the product, or 5 times negative 6y is negative 30y, and then when I add that to 9y, we get negative 21y equals 21, 
divide by negative 21 and y equals negative 1. Okay, now to find x, I'm going to plug it into this equation. Again, it doesn't matter which one, but this is already in the form x equals. So it says to get the x, we just take the y value multiplied by negative 6. So negative 6 times negative 1, x equals 6. So written separately, it looks like that, and as a point, it would be 6 comma negative 1. And I'll check again that it makes sense or works in the other equation I didn't use. So 5 times x, which is 6, plus 9 times negative 1, do we get 21? So 5 times 6 is 30, positive 9 times negative 1 is negative 9, and 30 minus 9 is 21, so it checks out. Okay, so that is the substitution method. Let's now look at the elimination method. So these examples do not, so example number 3, they're not in the format of x equals or y equals. So let's look at the first one. So negative 10x minus 5y equals 5 and negative 4x plus 5y equals 23. Now looking at these two equations, I can already see that the y terms have the same number in front with opposite signs. And I know when I add terms like this, I get 0. So I'm going to add these two equations and we get negative 14x equals 28. And then divide by negative 14, and we have our x value of negative 2. Okay, now I can go back and plug into either. So I'll just use the top one. It doesn't really matter. So it's negative 10, plug in our x of negative 2, minus 5y equals 5. So 20 minus 5y equals 5. Notice I ended up with just an equation with x here, just like with substitution, and now just an equation with y, which allows me to solve for the one variable. So negative 5y equals negative 15, divided by negative 5, and y equals 3. So as a point, it would be negative 2, 3. Okay, number four, and the last one we'll do for elimination. Uh, let's do, so 3x minus 8y equals 19, and 3x plus 5y equals negative 46. Now here, I can see that the... terms are the same, but they're not opposite. So if I were to add them together, right, I would get 6x and not 0. So I'm going to multiply this top one by negative 1. Remember, you can multiply by any number to get the coefficients the same, but the opposite signs. And I'm just going to write it right below. So it be negative 3x, positive 8y, negative 19. Now when I add them together, these cross out, 5 plus 8, 13y equals, uh, let's see, 15, carry the 1, 4, 5, 6, negative 65. Then divide by 13, and y equals negative 5. And then once we have y, we go back to either equation of the original, which is in black, and find x. So I'll use the top one again. So 3x minus 8 times negative 5 equals 19. So we have 3x plus 40 equals 19. Subtract 40. We get 3x equals uh, negative 21. Divide by 3. And x equals negative 7. So as a point, this is negative 7, negative 5. Okay, so this is the elimination method. So let's actually put that at the top of the page. 
and I wasn't substituting anything into one of the equations. We're eliminating a variable. Here I eliminated the y to find x. Here we eliminated x to find y and then use that one variable to find the other by substitution. All right, so the last two examples, this one's gonna be multiple choice. This is example number five. So let's write down the problem first. So it says, which system of equations has the same solution as the system below. So keywords, we're looking for which one has the same solution. Okay, and we don't want to have to solve every one of them. That would be way too long. So we'll talk about a strategy. The given system is 2x plus y equals negative 11, and 4x plus 4y equals negative 8. And our answer choices, I'll write those in purple. So the first one, I'll number answer choice 1, even though they're not numbered in Delta Math. So it's negative 4x minus 2y equals negative 11. Um, 4x plus 4y equals negative 8. Choice two, negative four x minus two y equals twenty-two, and four x plus four y equals negative eight. Answer choice three, two x minus two y equals twenty-two, and four x plus four y equals negative eight, and last, negative four x plus y equals 22, and 4x plus 4y equals negative 8. Now, you want to evaluate, or not evaluate, but analyze each equation separately. So the top one goes with the top one, and all of these answer choices. And then the bottom equation goes with the bottom one, and all the answer choices. If it stayed the same, then obviously it's equivalent, okay? So we can star all the ones that are the same because that would work. So the 4x plus 4y equals negative 8, that's right, that's obviously equivalent. And then, um, or actually they all stayed the same. Hmm, that's weird. Makes it easier though. Okay, so these are all equivalent to the given one because they're exactly the same. Now, as far as the other one, so I'll use green. If it's equivalent, if it's the same thing, which none of them are, um, then it's obviously equivalent. So we take a look at the first one. To go from a 2 to negative 4, they must have multiplied by negative 2. So if we multiply this by negative 2, we get negative 2y. Good. Multiply this by negative 2, it should be 22. So 1 is out. Here, we'll go right below. It's 2 times negative 2 again, good. Uh, times negative 2, good. That matches. And negative 11 times negative 2 is 22. So this one's looking like it works. Good. This one stayed the same, so the y should stay the same. You either multiply them all, or you multiply none of them. So since this one was multiplied by negative 2, as well as this one, this one should have also been. And then here, again, it's 2 times negative 2, which gives us the negative 4. So this times negative 2 should have been the negative 2y. So this one is the one that's equivalent. Okay? And last, example number 6. I'm actually going to write this on a separate sheet of paper as well. or move to a clean sheet, rather. I didn't have much room at the bottom. So to finish, this one says determine if the following system 
of equations has no solution, infinitely many solutions, or exactly one solution. Okay, so again we want to know does it have no solution, infinitely many, or just one. Okay, so the system is 4x plus 5y equals 5 and 8x plus 10y equals 10. All right. So when I'm looking at the system, this would be elimination method because it's not in the form x equals or y equals like we saw on the first page. This was y equals, this was x equals. So if I were to add these together now, uh, my x terms don't match and they're on opposite signs to add to get zero and same with the y. But I'm noticing that if I just double, okay, the top one, I do get 8 and 10 and 10. However, um, I want to multiply by negative 2 so that when I add, I can actually eliminate. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by negative 2, and I like to write it below. So negative 8x minus 10y equals negative 10. So now I'm looking at these two equations. And I notice that when I add them together now, we actually get um, 0 and then plus 0 equals 0 which is true so everything eliminated so remember when you end up with a final answer um, so if our answers are true it means there are infinitely many solutions okay but if it just so happens, so I'm going to make another one up. So say up here that number wasn't a 5. Let's change it to um, 4x plus 5y equals 7. And then keep the other one the same. Okay. And then we multiply this by negative 2 just as we did. So we end up with the negative 8x. They cancel out negative 10y, they cancel out, and then we end up with negative 14, right? So this was 0 on the left because everything canceled, but 10 minus 14 is a negative 4. Well, that's false. So if it comes out to be false, then that means there is no solution, okay? And if we could actually solve it like we did on this page, then there's one solution, okay? So you start using, in this case it was elimination method, if you come out with a true statement, so the variables both are eliminated and you have two numbers that are equivalent on the left and right side of the equation, that means it doesn't matter what number you get, there's going to, you know, it's going to check, it's going to work. So there's infinitely many, where here if you end up with an unequal statement or statement that's false, then there's no solution. And if you actually get a value for x or y and you can plug it back in and solve, then that means there's one solution. And that include, or concludes our notes for today. I just wanted to focus on, because me these methods are important and solving systems are very important for your future math classes, so I just wanted to focus on the elimination method and substitution method today. Have a good day.